Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss the topic translation, the process of conversion of information present on mRNA formed in the transcription process in the form of proteins is called translation. This process occurs in the cytoplasm in both prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes as it requires ribosomes which are found in cytoplasm, also observed in the matrix of mitochondria as well as stroma of chloroplast. Now let's see the mechanism of translation which is divided into five main steps. The first step is binding of an amino acid with the enzyme aminoacyl synthetase, which leads to formation of aminoacyl AMP enzyme complex. The energy for this step is acquired by breaking of high energy bonds of ATP. This step is called activation of amino acids. The second step is charging of tRNA. In this step, the aminoacyl AMP enzyme complex combines with tRNA and the amino acid is transferred to the three prime end of tRNA. The 3' hydroxyl group of terminal adenine residue of tRNA and carboxyl group of amino acid are linked by formation of ester bond. The tRNA having amino acyl group attached is called charged tRNA. The third step is initiation which is a fairly complex process. So it is divided into three sub-steps. The first is binding of smaller subunit of ribosomes to the mRNA by recognizing the conserved sequences of mRNA. This leads to formation of mRNA and smaller subunit complex. The second is attachment of initial amino acyl tRNA having methionine or formylated methionine to the start codon of mRNA. The complex thus formed is called 30S mRNA tRNA complex. Finally, the larger subunit of ribosome attaches to the 30S mRNA tRNA complex and now it is called 70S initiation complex. The larger subunit of ribosome has three sites, site A, site P, and site E. The initial tRNA is present at the P site, but the other tRNA enters the complex from the A site. Certain proteins called initiation factors are responsible for this step. These are divided into IF1, IF2, and IF3. The function of IF1 and IF3 is to prevent premature binding of larger subunit to the smaller subunit of ribosomes. IF2 is a GTP bound protein and carries the initial charged tRNA to 30S mRNA complex. After completion of initiation, the next step is elongation. Elongation factors are the proteins which carry out this process and these are also of three types. Elongation factor EFTS or elongation factor temperature stable, EFTU or elongation factor temperature unstable and EFG which is bound to GTP having translocase activity. The second charge tRNA enters the complex from A side. The first amino acid is removed from the first tRNA and attaches to the second amino acid by formation of a peptide bond. This peptide bond is formed between the carboxyl group of first amino acid and amino group of second amino acid. The ribosome complex now moves from 5' to 3' direction on mRNA to the next codon. And as a result, the first tRNA shifts from P site to E site and ultimately gets removed from the complex. Also, the second tRNA now shifts to the P site and A site becomes vacant to receive new charged tRNA. This movement is performed by the translocase activity of EFG and energy is provided by hydrolysis of GTP. Process continues and amino acids are continued to be added to the polypeptide chain. Addition of each amino acid requires consumption of two GTP. Encounter of stop codon stops the translation process. The ribosome mRNA complex dissociate due to certain proteins called release factors or RFs and the polypeptide chain is released. This polypeptide chain undergoes certain modification during post-translational modifications and is involved in the formation of certain complex proteins, enzymes, hormones, etc. So that is all for this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more upcoming videos.